Hello everyone, welcome back to the Phone Museum. Today, finally, finally we are looking to the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I have been using this phone for daily driver for about 100 days. And let's go into it. Before I talk about the inside software, I want to go over with the outside. For the outside, when you look at it, in the front, there's a 6.8 inch 19.3 by 9 ratio. So resolution is 3,088 times 1,440 with Infinity O display, and they also call Dynamic AMOLED 2X display, uh, which is a diamond subpixel type with refresh rate minimum 1 hertz to all the way up to 120 hertz, and maximum brightness is 1,750 nits. So this display is excellent display you can see in the market and you can see in the center there's a 12 megapixel dual pixel pdaf uh, autofocus camera with 80 degree angle f22 aperture and in the here you can there's a for the speaker for phone call and also for media play and inside of the panel there's a proximity sensor and an ambient light sensor as well. And also from this area, there's a ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is under the display as well. And there's a rumor before it came out, they're gonna put the new bigger sensor, but unfortunately it is same sensor from Galaxy S21 and S22 series as well. So this is a Qualcomm second gen 3D ultrasonic sensor. On the side, you can see there's a volume button and power button. On the bottom, there's a S Pen, which is signature from Galaxy Note series, but now it's a Ultra series, S Ultra series signature. There's another speaker and there's a SIM card tray. Unfortunately, there's no SD card extension. That's very unfortunate because I really enjoyed that feature. This one is air bent, so for the waterproof and stuff. And this one is mic, and this is USB Type C. One thing I like about the S series is they put USB Type C with USB 3.2, so you can faster data transfer through the USB cable. Especially we compared to the iPhone Pro series, they still support USB 2.0. I don't know why they they're like oh we have a ProRes video and other stuff but with 2.0 is very slow to transfer to your laptop so I think that's one downside and there's a rumor they're gonna put the Type C in the next model so let's see and on the left side there's only antenna and nothing else on the top there's another secondary mic you can use for the noise cancelling especially in phone call were for the stereo speaker, uh, stereo uh, recording. On the back, sometimes some people say, oh, you have a five camera, but it's actually four cameras because this one is for the laser autofocus. And from the top, 120 degree, 12 megapixel, F2.2 ultra wide camera. And this is one of the highlight of Galaxy S20 Ultra which is 85 degree 200 megapixel f1.7 main camera at the bottom is also signature of ultra series which is 11 degree uh, 10 megapixel f4.9 aperture 10 times optical zoom camera and this one is 36 degree 10 megapixel f2.4 three times optical zoom camera and there's a little LED flash you know as I told you laser oral focus and nothing on the back in here there's an NFC antenna so using Samsung pay you put this area and this area there's a GPS antenna and there's wireless charging coil underneath and this front and back is a Gorilla Glass Victors 2. They say they improve a lot for scratch and you know, protect from the dropping. But it's still glass, so you need to be, take care. 
And on the side, this is the Samsung they claim is really one of the strongest aluminum and they call it armor aluminum. But I didn't really try, but I guess it's pretty rigid, hard to bend. So you don't have to worry about it. Since we talk about the basic exterior, so let's talk about the performance as well. The performance, as many, many of you guys already know, uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. I kind of want to talk about that one. So they say it's for Galaxy, but I don't think it's that special they have the name for Galaxy. Because the difference between regular Gen 2 is the Prime Core, which is Cortex-X3, and GPU has higher clock than regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is similar to the Snapdragon 600 from Galaxy S4 or Snapdragon 800 for Galaxy Note 3. So talk about the, this performance thing. We can talk in detail video in the future video. So let's go briefly for the other performance. So speed. It is very broadly smooth and very fast as well. Whatever you do, uh, it's really hard to find the lag. It's very, very smooth and fast. Maybe it's because of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Also, it can be because of the 120 Hz uh, display. And also, they did pretty well for the optimization of this One UI. So, it's pretty good. And also, these days, summer is pretty hot already. Right now, it's a little cool down, but when I use it in May, the temperature went all the way up to 32 degree, uh, which is close enough to 90 degree Fahrenheit. And also, uh, my room does not have AC, my house does not have AC, so even in those temperature, I didn't feel that overheating. This device didn't overheat much. And I think because they claim they, they make a three times bigger vapor chamber. So even in a hot summer, you don't have to worry too much about the overheating issues. And to be honest, now I have to use it for the older device as well. Now I'm a little worried about how I want to use those smartphones since I already had like this very smooth display with the really good performance. I have to go back to, you know, old old time smartphones. So I'm a little worried about it, but I will get used to it. And let's talk about the basic benchmark. In 3D Mark is more GPU focused a benchmark that say is better than a 16 Bionic and the Geekbench which is more focused on CPU is a little bit behind than a 16 Bionic but the point of benchmark and calculating the score is it can be varied depending on the what kind of benchmark you're using and what kind of benchmark focus more to give a more score so it can be not reliable on real life score. So I searched a little bit about the uh, uh, YouTube and there's one of YouTuber there. He doing the little real life performance test with Galaxy S23 Ultra, iPhone 14 Pro Max and Pixel 7 Pro. He turned on the Microsoft team and screen share and then playing the Aspart 9 for 30 minutes. And in that video, according to that video, Galaxy has better performance than iPhone or Pixel and even screen brightness is brighter than other two phones. According to that one, uh, S23 is one of the best multitasking smartphone. So benchmark score is not everything because every manufacturer focusing on different stuff. So iPhone usually focus on single processing, single program. It doesn't even support the dual screen at all. This Galaxy support since Galaxy Note 2, which is came from 2012. So yeah, especially Pixel, they're more focused on the AI machine learning and Galaxy, they more focus on the multitasking. So there's pros and cons for each device. So overall performance and all heating control, I think I really enjoyed. So I can give 10 out of 10 A plus 
for performance. And let's go for the audio. As of these days smartphone, it has a pair of speaker, stereo speaker. And the sound is tuned by AKG. So my ear is one of the best speaker I had. But one thing I, I don't like it is the bottom speaker is way more louder than top speaker. So the balance is a little unbalanced. And I don't know why, there's one thing. When I, I sometimes in my room, I usually using my phone for speaker mode. But when I doing the speaker mode, I don't know, I, I kind of wanted to hear both speakers, so make it louder. But when I turn the speaker mode, the sp sound only come from the bottom speaker. I don't know why. That's one downside I had. We're talking about speaker, so let's go to the, the speaker quality. So at the time, I was turned the Dolby Atmos with the music. Uh, I, I really like the speaker. The sound is pretty rich and loud. But I was a little disappointed with the, the balance because it's not because of the top speaker is so bad. It's because bottom speaker is way better than top speaker. That's why it's a little unbalanced. And also doing the speaker phone call, it's only come out of one speaker instead of two speaker, so I can give 9 out of 10, which is A for the audio. And I want to talk about the battery. So inside, there is 5,000 milliamps battery, which is pretty big. And for the wireless, up to 15 watt charging. And for the wire, is all the way up to 45 watt. And my usual usage i turn on the the protect battery which is it charge up to 85 percent and i try to charge when it's below 40 percent and discharge when it's over 80 percent using like that expect time of battery usage is show 11 hours of screen on time and three day and half for screen off time so total I can use around day and a half, which is pretty good. Even this prediction, I never had this long battery prediction before. So it's amazing. Oh, by the way, when I'm using the phone, I turn on the AOD always during the daytime. And I turn on the, the little blue light kind of stuff, always on. And dark mode as a schedule. And also, usually I'm using the, this little performance as a light mode and always turn the 120 hertz uh, refresh rate. So 11 hour, that's a prediction. So how's it in real life from 100% to 0%? So I test with many different scenario. First, I turn the light mode and I went to the travel. So I usually using the this phone as a navigation. So GPS was almost always on and the Wi-Fi always on the data and I using a lot of camera to take picture and video recording as well at the time I can use between four and a half an hour to five hours of a screen on time and I was wondering okay so what if I turn on the ultra power saving mode so there's power saving if you go to detail you can limit the apps and home screen as well if you turn on, then there's only eight apps on the home screen. Everything is black on the background and stuff. Using that mode in the in the travel, so still I'm using a lot of GPS and camera. I can use all the way up to eight hours of screen on time. 
which is 60% longer than didn't turn the power saving mode. And also I test as of my regular pattern, which is turn the light mode. It I can use around seven hours of a screen on time. But the funny thing is when I turn off the light mode, the standard mode, I can use all the way up to eight hour 45 minutes to nine hour 45 minutes. I don't know why light mode you consume more battery than standard, to be honest, I have no idea. And also I turn on the light mode, it does 60 Hertz or lower refresh rate. At that time, I can use eight hour and 30 minutes. Even light mode with a 60 Hertz refresh rate is a shorter than a 120 Hertz with a standard mode. I don't know why. Maybe my usage is using a lot of process. So it uses more power at the light mode since it needs more power. I have no idea, but that's what I experienced. And for the charging speed, so in here, without uh, turning the fast wireless charging, so just a regular wireless charging, I can it take four hour and thirty minutes to fully charge. It said, and real life is take four hour and fifty five minutes to fully charge. And I turn on the fast wireless charge and I'm using the Samsung official wireless charger, 15 watt fast wireless charger. It's predict to fully charge in two hours, but actually it's take a two hour and 22 minutes. And for the fast charging, I use 15 standard Samsung old fast charging, 15 watt one. It's expect to take hour and 15 minutes, but actually it's take a two hour and 17 minutes. And I using 25 watt fast charger. It predict to fully charge in one hour and 15 minutes, but actually it take a one hour and 40 minutes. And 45 watt is a fully charge in one hour and five minutes, but actually it take one hour and 20 minutes. And if you turn off the fast charger, then it's around taking 10 watt, and it's predict around two and two hour and 20 minutes, and actually it's taking three hours to fully charge. And also, lastly, I charge with a 7.75 watt charger from Samsung. They shipping with the Galaxy Tab A7 Lite. For that one, it's also similar, two hour and 20 minutes to predict. And actually, it takes three hours to fully charge, which is similar to the tone of the fast charging. So for the battery, I, I really enjoy this battery. It's so long. And I don't usually use 45 uh, fast charging, but some people prefer they they want they wish to have at least 65 watt charger. But me, 45 is more than enough. It take a uh, less than two hour, to be honest, less than hour and a half. So that's fast enough for me. So for battery, I, I can give 10 out of 10, which is a plus as well. Now let's talk about Galaxy S23 Ultra display. For the display. The color is very bright and I is pretty accurate and very vivid. I really like it. And as you can see, it's from the screen mode. You can choose if you want, you can make more vivid or you can change the white balance, cooler or warmer, or you can change in RGB level as well. Yeah, so display is pretty good. And also it support 120 Hertz. Uh, refresh rate in here so it will go down all the way to 1 hertz to all the way up to 120 hertz and also have a really thin bezel so you go into searching through the website watching the video whatever you do is i really like this display it's perfect and also it has a vision booster feature so when you go outside it will boost up your brightness for uh, some bright thing and lower the brightness for the dark thing so it's more visible in outdoor so brightness is it can go up to 1750 nit which is bright enough so even you go outside you don't have to worry about uh, your screen is too dim and those kind of stuff oh and i want to talk about one thing so samsung they put always on display since galaxy s7 from Galaxy S7 to Galaxy S9, when you go 
for example, you're putting in your pocket or whatever, for example, it thing is in the under the pocket or something, then the AOD is uh, automatically turned off. But since Galaxy S10, because of the proximity sensor is under the display, right now it's really dim, that's why it's hard to see, but in my eye, I can see the AOD is still on. And you can see even better in night time and those kind of stuff. I prefer it's automatically turn off if it's the phone no is under the under the something or inside of your pocket or inside of your purse, then it's automatically turn off since highly likely I'm not gonna look at the uh, phone screen. But I I guess they cannot put the proximity sensor under the display and it's turned on all the time. I don't know, but it doesn't have an automatic turn off feature. And I saw a few uh, YouTube video they they claim that uh, since Galaxy S21, they S21 say it, it can go all the way on, on to 10 hertz to all the way up to 120 hertz. But when you go to the developer option, uh, turn the uh, refresh rate, it doesn't go all the way to 1 hertz. It's all all the way up to 24 hertz. That's many people complain about it, and I saw it as well. When you turn up, it's always on display, so it should right now is. GIF, I don't know if you can see it or not. After my GIF is finished, then this one should go down to the one hertz. But you can see it's twenty, still twenty four hertz. But I think right now the this showing the hertz is turned on. If you turn off, it will go down to the one hertz. But the system know this number is variable. You can it's changing depending on the situation so that's why when you turn on this one they can go down all the way to 24 hertz but you cannot go down lower than 24 that's my guess i'm not sure and this hertz you can see right now is 24 hertz and it's up to 120 hertz and 60 hertz is moving depending on thing because my internet speed is moving that's why it's go to 60 and 24 60 and 24 like that uh, I found funny thing is when you go to the lock screen, it's fixed to oh, right now this screen is hard to see, so let's change fixed to 96 hertz. So it, it cannot go all the way up to 120 hertz in uh, lock screen. That's one thing I found weird. And also the OLED display. The one of important thing is what sub pixel uh, material they used. So, for example, iPhone 14 Pro, they're using M12, but they say this one using M11 for uh, blue subpixel, but green and red is not M11, neither M12. So, there's a, a research uh, test team, they say uh, blue is one generation behind, but red and green they change something so the color accuracy and vividness is excellent so blue is one of the weakest uh, to get a burning situation so it's not one m12 that's a one downsize but still the color accuracy and after m10 there's a, not a big issue in burnings i believe so I think the display is pretty good. I can give 9.5 out of 10, which is a plus. And the last, I want to go over the camera because since Galaxy S23 Ultra unpacked, they spent lots of time about the camera. And camera, there's front and back. There's total five cameras. And all the five camera, they, they support PDAF and other than 200 megapixel camera, they all support a uh, dual pixel as well. And other than the ultra wide camera and a front facing camera, all three cameras support OIS as well. So the camera itself seems pretty expensive to manufacture. That's why it's one, one of the reasons it's a pretty expensive phone. For the for picture quality, I really enjoy it enjoy taking picture with this phone. This phone give me a 
another join is of taking picture because one thing is I can zoom in to like 10 times all the way to 30 times is still useful and if bright good condition all the way to 50 times is still useful and 100 times is kind of little gimmicky but sometimes it's good but sometimes it's kind of little cartoon-ish but I think it's still good so either way you're taking picture day night or night time front back both really good and iPhone 14 Pro has finally they put auto focus on front face camera but Galaxy since Galaxy S8 has an auto focus on the front face camera so with the big group you don't have to worry about that you're losing focus and I want to talk about more in detail in camera episode but they put little camera assistant so you can customize whatever you want I will go over in the Gulag app as well and depending on the which style you want you can change whatever you want you can customize everything so I this one is also when you when you download the app is automatically in the settings app it's right here but I sometimes I want to change it immediately so I put on the home screen so I can change anytime and also they put the photo remaster feature I mean this one has been there for since Galaxy S20 but at the time I cannot turn on on the setting is when you're charging the phone automatically AI using or you can up upscaling this picture and they suggest me to do the remastering but now I think it's since Galaxy S22 I believe but it, you can do it manually as well so you can remaster the picture then in this case there's a little shade um, shadow but you can erase that shadow as well it's not only this kind of stuff if you have low quality picture it will upscale that uh, resolution as well and and for the portrait picture they make it more colorful and vivid as well and sometimes they making some adjustment as well and also AI eraser is pretty fun to use as well it's not a uh, excellent 100% but it's better than nothing so uh, when you go to the edit go to this dot object eraser and you click whatever you want then erase then it will erase for you it's pretty nice and if you're taking picture or uh, go through the glass then you have uh, some reflection you can erase the reflection as well it's not perfect but useful and one thing I can use was if you screenshot from the online it's not recommended but you can screenshot and there's a watermark some photo if you're using this one for three four times you can kind of hide the watermark as well it's kind of funny and the erase shadow is also work perfect I mean not perfect it's pretty well and also Samsung they made a little app called Galaxy Enhance X uh, which is I will go in detail in the other video but which is uh, you pick the picture you can change the HDR and those kind of stuff you can see how it changed and if you you can change the pixel mirror the reflection and bunch of different stuff I will go detail in different video and one bad thing is before Galaxy S20 Ultra they have a 48 megapixel for the zoom camera and even Pixel 7 Pro they have a 48 megapixel for zoom camera I wish they put the higher resolution camera for the their zoom camera as well because this one is 10 megapixel but when you take a picture with this zoom camera they upscaling to uh, 12 megapixel even upscaling to 12 megapixel has pretty good quality but if they're using 48 megapixel and using the pixel beaming to make it 12 megapixel I think that would be much better quality or maybe because of the dual pixel they, they just they rather put the 10 megapixel then why don't they use the 12 megapixel dual pixel camera 
And also there's a rumor going on about the Galaxy S24 Ultra that we're using the um, variable zoom lens like a Sony Xperia 1. I wish they put in here as well since Xperia they have 3.5 zoom to 5.2 to moving optical zoom. So because of the this is mobile, it doesn't have a big space. Maybe it's hard to do five times to ten times, but hopefully in S24 Ultra or other uh, later phone, hopefully they put a uh, ultra wide camera and a main camera, three three times optical zoom camera and five to ten times zoom camera. Because I wish five times optical zoom will be nice to have it, I believe. And if it's possible, probably one to three times in main camera to optical zoom and five to 10 optical zoom, that would be perfect, but let's see. So for camera is good. I mean, I should say excellent, but I can see in the future, they're gonna put the optical zoom lens and stuff. So I will give 9.5 out of 10. So overall, that was a hundred days uses of Galaxy S23 Ultra as a main driver and I try to be as short as possible but it's getting a little long but so later I will more in detail about the camera and main UI the one UI and also good luck applications and basic apps of Samsung apps and settings as well so speaking of that if you want to receive those video as soon as possible, I will try to make it as soon as possible as well. Then please subscribe my channel and give me a thumbs up. That would be nice. Thank you so much and have a nice day.